Hey guys, it's Bill Allen from Evolve Lab, and today we're gonna to be talking about AI rendering using Varus. Now, we released a video probably about a year ago for Varus, but it's been quite some time. We've added a ton of new features, a geometry override, a material override. We have a render selection feature now, render from same seed, a bunch of really awesome features that we're excited to show you guys. So with that, let's jump right into it. Okay, so if you are interested in trying out Varus for yourself, what you can do is go to www.evolvelab.io forward slash Varus. And in here you have the option to download for Windows or Apple as well as launching the web. Uh, some things to note is that we do support SketchUp, Autodesk Revit, Rhino, Autodesk, Forma, and Vectorworks. And then we also have the web version as well. All right, so now that we're inside of Revit, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and launch Varus from the Evolve Lab tab. And something you're gonna notice is that Varus uses whatever the active view is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the width here just to be a, a little bit longer um, to kind of match my aspect ratio here. I'm gonna use a typical 1920 by 1024. I'm gonna go ahead and expand this. And I'm just gonna kick off three renderings here on each one of these tabs and talk about this. So let's talk about this explore mode. Explore mode is basically a place that if you're not quite sure how to start doing AI rendering or text prompts, this is a great place to pick on some presets and go ahead and render those. All right, so we just got all three of our renderings come back. Um, here we have our timber autumn realistic image. We have our winter cabin creative image and then we have our forest rain realistic image. So in here, you can see the drastic difference kind of between all three of these, and we didn't have to assign you know specific materials or set up our skies or any of our backgrounds or anything like that, which is really, really powerful. Now, something I wanna switch over now to is over to this compose mode. So as we get over to compose mode, something I want you to see as we click on these different um, images, you'll see the sliders updating and the text prompt. You can actually see what's under the hood here as far as what we use as a text prompt. Now, some of these other settings I'll talk through just really quickly. This one is using Turbo Nature. So this is gonna give kind of more vegetation into our scene. And then the atmospheric is gonna give it kind of that foggy, kind of like you're in the mountains or a gloomy kind of day uh, kind of setting where you can see when that's off, you know, it's super crisp, clear, uh, kind of day. So those are some just presets that you could utilize uh, that are really, really powerful. Now, the other thing I want to talk through is this geometry override. So you'll see here for this uh, image, the geometry override is all the way low. And what that's doing is it's allowing us to use Varus kind of more as a traditional rendering uh, application where it's leaving the model exactly as it is. Um, it's not changing the windows, the roof, um, the walls, anything like that. And so that's really nice just using it for rendering purposes. But now let's go ahead and take it a step further. I'm gonna go ahead and bump this up just to kind of show you how this could start to work. Maybe put my geometry override at around a 60. And I'm gonna change my text prompt. I'm gonna call this um, a award-winning rendering of white parametric cabin designed in the style of Zaha. Heidi, golden hour, and we'll say um, mountain backdrop. Now, another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some parentheses around this. I'm pretty sure it would have done a good job, but I wanna do this just to illustrate that if you put parentheses around any words, that gives uh, further weight to those words, okay? So our geometry override is up quite a bit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna kick off four um, renderings for this. And what I wanna show is just some different design options. Now, something to note is that our geometry override is up really, really high. So Varus is gonna take more creative freedom to actually change the model this time. And so this would be like if you're using it for like early concept design and you wanna start doing some different design studies and di different design iterations. 
All right. So we're starting to get um, some of our images coming back here. Here's one of them um, and another one. And you can see it's really honoring that kind of cabin in the woods kind of feel, but also a very kind of modern parametric looking kind of uh, architecture. Uh, this would be in the style of what we call parametricism. And so this is a pretty cool shot right here. But just to note, like, look at the drastic difference between, say, this model and this one. So again, this is if we're using it just for exactly very literal kind of rendering of our exact model, where if we want to start using it for more creativity, okay? All right, so let's kick over to um, an interior shot now, because what I want to do is show you a few other features of Varus. Now, I'm going to bump down my geometry override just a little bit here. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to lower my material override all the way. So let's say we have this interior shot and let's say we have a um, modern living room with leather furniture and we'll say ocean background and sunset. Okay, I'm going to turn off turbo nature and I'm going to turn on is interior. And let's go ahead and kick off just three renderings for that. Okay, so we got some of our renderings back. One of the things I want you to notice is that material, that it really tried to stick to that kind of orange color that's in the sample model. Uh, though I do kind of dig the brown leather. That's a pretty cool uh, couch and ottoman here. And so that is the material override, how you could lower that all the way. Now, another thing I want to show you is that you could also say uh, water color rendering of modern living room. And well, let's just do three of those really quick. And what I want to show you is that you can actually have different styles of renderings even. So you can do pencil sketches, photorealistic, watercolor, and Varus will actually render in the style of that kind of render setting. I want to show you some of the results we're getting here. So you can see where it's a little bit more sketchy, uh, doesn't look as photorealistic, etc. So this is a way you can start to get, you know, some different styles uh, for your shot and doesn't always have to be that kind of like photorealistic kind of look. Okay, so another feature I want to show you in Varus is this render from same seed. Now this is really powerful because a lot of times when we're doing AI renderings, it can kind of feel like a roll of the dice of what you're going to get. And so this render from same seed is a way to have more control and more deterministic output for what you get. So what I'm going to do is change this from white, from black leather furniture to white leather furniture. And we're going to go ahead and kick off a rendering from that using the same seed. You can kind of think of this like a like this mode, like give me some options that are like this. So maybe we like, you know, the background, we like the sunset, the mood, the feeling of the scene. We really are really captivated by this, but we want to play with some different design options. So this is a way we can change it from black leather furniture to white leather furniture and get the same kind of feel of the image. There we go. So you can see here, going from our black furniture shot to our white leather furniture shot, it's mostly the same. There's a few little changes, but mostly it is keeping that kind of consistency from one to the next. Another thing I want to show you is this refine mode. And so this also gives you some controllability. This is almost kind of like the uh, Adobe Photoshop generative fill feature that they have. Um, what you can do is you can select an area that you want to re-render. So maybe I like this whole scene, but I want to play with, you know, some different ceiling options. So I could say wood ceiling and I'm going to crank up my geometry override and I'm going to turn off this render from same seed. And let's just create four uh, design options for this one. All right. So we just got our four different design options. These two here are the two that I like uh, the most. And so you can go through and see how we were able to retain the rest of our image while only overriding the ceiling. We also have this uh, new render selection blend mode. It's trying to kind of blend uh, the outside uh, of your image with the inside of it or the outside of your crop boundary with the inside of it. All right, that is it for our Evolve Lab Varus new features video. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please hit that like and subscribe button, and we will catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.